like son. Now listen to me, listen to me cleanly, right? They don't call me ninja man for nothing, right? I, I, I am the ninja man. Now if you think you're gonna get away with taking my cryptos, right? I don't care who you think you are, yeah? Ring finance, right? When I get hold of you, boy, and you go in that, you, you go in that cell, your ring's gonna be a lot, lot larger than what it is now, I can guarantee you that. Right? I've got a few people in there that they're waiting for you to come in. They've been rubbing their hands, mate. Alright? And you know what? Whether you think you dropped the soap or not, you're gonna find out, mate. Right? That ring's gonna get exercise. It's gonna get stretched to its capacity. <laughs> yeah, you better put a lot more than all this 300 million that you've taken from people up there by the time you're done, son. You'll have the whole prison in there. Alright? Now listen and listen to me cleanly. Alright? I am the ninja man. And I'm telling you now, if you got those people's money, you need to give it back. Because I'm telling you, I'm, listen mate, right? Those boys are coming. They're coming. Alright? <laughs> you playing games with the wrong people, son. Yeah, you're playing games with the wrong damn people. What ring are you talking about? You talking about this ring? Is it this ring? Well, uh, I mean, I haven't scammed anyone. You, you, you brought this ring to me. Is it, is it, is it this ring you're talking about? This one here. Is it this ring? You talking about this ring? No, love, not your ring. I'm not talking about your lovely ring. I'm talking about those ringers that's been out there scamming people. They're going to get their time, mate. Their ring's going to be stretched to capacity. <laughs> right? It's not yours. It's theirs. That's right. Hey, guys, your main guy, CBK, and we are back with another exposing video. But... Did you guys like the skit? I'm going to be doing a lot more skits with a lot more videos that I actually do. Why? Because I want, we need to inject some humor back into the actual space, right? Because the truth of the matter is, after getting these educational videos that I'm going to be releasing hopefully every day, if you guys are still getting scammed, then you know what? You need to laugh at yourself because the truth of the matter is, I mean, come on, man, you know, with education, we should be wiser and make wiser choices. And this is what I'm going to do. Educate you guys so you guys know exactly how the whole smart contract and the, the little to telltale signs of what they use to scam people. And once you know, you know what to look for, then you know what? These ruggers, we can we can starve these scammers completely out of the crypto space so then we can invest in things that actually, you know, make you cryptos, right? So this is what we're going to do. Okay, Ring Finance, and I'm always going to be talking about Ring Finance until the website's taken down. You can't, cannot, well, they can't remove the contract because the contract's there. It's always going to be there, right? So this is it, Ring Finance, right? Just stroll all the way down to the bottom, yeah? Because there's nowhere else you can see the actual contract right now, right? But stroll all the way down to the, to the bottom, yeah? And um, you can see that basically there is nowhere where we have a contract that we can click on. So that's the first sign. There's no contract address that you can see on the actual website to verify it, to make sure that it's all, all okay. They haven't been audited either, right? So these are the two things that we need to take into consideration and we need to be looking out for, right? These guys had a proxy contract and they also had a pausable contract, right? And what I mean by that is they, they programmed into their contract a proxy which is another contract that acts side by side by the original contract so this is where we're saying well how could they just change that i thought when you release a contract it's there and you can't change it it's out there well this is where the proxy comes into it and the pausable contract is they can actually pause the payouts and we've been through that experience with Ring. So they pause the payouts, which simply means that, right, no more payouts is going out until they claim that they're gonna be doing what they need to do, blah, blah, blah. During that time, what they were doing was they were implementing a proxy, yeah? A proxy, a second contract. So let's call the first contract that we had, not this one, but the first one we had was contract A. Then the proxy, which was written with contract A, was ready to be implemented 
with contract B. And what it does, it basically speaks to contract A and it takes the instructions from contract B to control contract A. All right, and that's a proxy contract. So we're gonna go into it and we're gonna I'm gonna explain exactly what contracts and proxies are. All right. Okay, boys, so this is basically a final um final final look into how Ring was able to do what they done, right? Now, there were two things that I'm gonna to present to you. This, the first one is called a proxy contract. And what that does, it runs, well, not necessarily runs alongside, but it actually interacts with the actual main contract that they um, put on the BSC scan, for instance, right? So the proxy contract can actually change functions in the, in the actual contract. Now you guys need to do a little bit of research as to what functions are, but functions are very powerful um, commands that can actually change the way in which you code your contract. So you can basically add function to do specific things. So what they've done is they've used a proxy to change the actual commands in the actual contract. So they can literally maybe move funds or there's so many things they can do. So with that said, they are using a proxy plus they are using a pause on the actual contract, right? And we both experienced both of those things with Ring, okay? So these people, they know, I mean, you know, they've gone out there purposely to scam people and create, you know, stories, yeah? To say why they basically, you know, we have to create another contract. They didn't create another contract. They just changed the functions within the contract to suit what it is that they wanted to do, right? So this is where the whole thing lies. They are using specific, um, let's just call it tricks, to get away with a lot of things that they're actually doing. So they used a proxy and they also used a pause, right? Let me break down what a proxy um just give me a second make sure that my volume is correct yeah excellent okay so let me break down what a proxy actually does right so a proxy contract keeps the storage of contract a but allows you to code and execute instructions through contract b all right so it's two two distinct contracts um Storage tracks everyone's balances. So this is what it does. I mean, the storage itself, which is on contract A, it tracks everyone's balances, right? So literally that's all that does. Proxy means you can change the contract which equals to a rug pull, yeah? The minute you can go in with a proxy contract and change the code, then you literally can do anything that you want because you can change parameters within it, functions and, and, and stuff like that, to suit what it is that you want. And this is what Ring done, okay? To spot a proxy, you will see a bunch of import tags. Now, we can go over to Ring's contract, the, the contract that, the, the actual um, contract address that they've now given, right? Now, in this contract, you can't really see if we got, I actually went through this and I can't see um, any import. And normally the import will be just under the Pragma Solidity because what you're doing is the contract, where the contract starts, you're basically going to give a bunch of instructions just under the Pragma Solidity. If you're not a programmer, you're not going to know this. All right. So this is where the original contract had all of those things and they managed to to pass a lot of people that claimed that they looked over the contract and it was okay. The problem is, if you're not a coder, these things will just go over your head, right? I had issues with this um, particular project and I said to myself, some there were some things that don't look right. Now, just because someone has a um, proxy or even a pool, a pool's, on their actual contract doesn't necessarily mean they're out to do wrong but my whole thing was when i saw them on kryptonairs the mere fact that they were very shady with the information shady with 
not being on camera, shady with the fact that they weren't doxxed, kind of made me realize, look, these guys are not, something's not right. And if you go through my videos, my first ever video, I was like, guys, look, this could be a ring pull or a rug pull. Yeah. So let's just land that right there. So what else can we do? Can we look at at the contract just to safeguard us being rugged again? And we still are on the actual ring contract, right? So let's just go down. So the, one of the first things you have to do, really, right? Just looking at this, is to make sure that the contract is verified, right? And it tells you that it's an exact match. Obviously, it's a ring. I mean, sorry, it's a fork anyway. So they probably forked off their own contract, the first contract or contract A that I spoke about earlier. Uh, and um, we know that they forked off of strong, right? So realistically, this is the first thing. So the fact that it says it is an exact match is not necessarily an issue, but, you know, it just shows, right? So <clears throat> contract source is verified. So that's the first thing that you need to look at, right? The second thing you need to look at is um, we need to go down to read contract. So let me just um, go over here to read contract. And there's a few things here that you can look at. Um, the first being, okay, so just looking at this, you can see that the dead wallet is all zeros, which which is good. That's what we want to see, right? But there are some stuff that, we, that I would say is a little bit um, concerning. Now, when we go all the way down to owner, I want to bring your attention to owner, all right? And then we're going to look a little bit more into where this owner address goes. So um, get total reward state. That's not the one we're looking for. Here we go, owner. Right, so this wallet address here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this link in a new tab. <clears throat> okay, and we're going to look at where this um, owner address goes because this owner address should not be an actual address. It should be zeros, right? So let's just move over and we're going to see where this own address goes, right? So looking at this, we've got um, 20 BNB here, um, which is 10,592. But then they probably transferred a lot of this to other places. So what are we going to do? And what's the times? That was six days ago. So a lot of this activity on this address was six days ago, nine, eight days ago nine days ago blah 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 so there's a lot of stuff going out let's have a quick little look on internals right so we can see all of this stuff here look we got 14 bnb here this was 13.5 days ago so there's a lot of stuff a lot of transactions happening there let's just see what they've got in here Right, so we could see, and to be quite honest, we, these could be, here we go, Meta Islands, right? And they've got 106 Meta, Meta Islands here. Um, Ring, Safe Moon, Sheba Divide, right? So some of these might be legit tokens that they've actually got because we, we saw Safe Moon in there, right? But the fact is, is that we can see Meta Islands is in there. We're, this is a direct connection to show that these are the same people. So that's just that. Yeah, we can see exactly where this wallet address is going. So this shouldn't be someone's personal wallet, really, right? Because then they can actually just sell all the tokens, which they probably have. They sold majority and left a little bit in there because they realized, you know what, not to make it look too suspicious. They've rinsed out the rest of it and just left a little bit, right? So that's the only address and that shouldn't be that. That should be all zeros. Okay, so, um, so we go over to the actual ring token address or token contract and we're just gonna look at the actual holders. And this will give us, right, so the majority, they say, is actually in a dead address. So th what they've done is they've basically changed it. So they got 90,456,743, which they burnt anyway, right? So we know that this is what they actually burnt. It was 20-something million when they started. Um, Pancake Swap has this, which is 2-point-something percent. 
and the rest really are just going to be the poor suds that was left holding these useless tokens really so this owner address should have been zeros if they renounced it yeah if they renounced the owner address that should all be zeros the reality is is not now they probably gone in and just changed because they you you know they got a proxy um contract they probably gone in and just pasted another contract address in there you can do that right so the fact is is you know they've probably cleaned up their footsteps afterwards to try to make it seem as if it's not that bad yeah because they've left some tokens in the actual um in the owner address right to make it seem as if we have a rug pull look there's some con there's some tokens there i don't know what these people are talking about well, I'll tell you what, the next video, we may take a deeper dive into where these funds have gone. All right? It's going to be painstaking, but I may consider doing it. Let me know in the description, in the actual comments area, whether I should. And you know what? We'll, we'll trace where, if, especially if, if you guys got the original contract address, post that up. All right? I did have it and I missed misplaced it somewhere if someone has that post it up i've got this one post up the other one the contract a in that sense right the first ever contract and we can do some deep diving and maybe help out the police to um do their research so we can get these people caught all right and get that money back into the rightful respective hands where it needs to be where it's me you and everybody else all right all right guys listen um the last thing that i want to say before i go right and there is this right here this is something which allows you to check your contract or anybody else's contract right to see if there's any vulnerabilities in there it will highlight a, highlight a lot of things right especially like um renounce wallets it will check for um it will check for proxy contracts. It can check the proxy contracts to let you know exactly what is going on. The only downfall with using tools, you need the whole code, right? You need the whole contracts and, and the multiple contracts that makes up the whole project, right? And what a lot of scammers do not do is share their contract on GitHub right so because it's not on github it makes it harder i mean you can't just necessarily come here and think that all of this code is 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 all you need no because there are a lot of functions and a lot of missing code that they do not or it's hidden should i say rather so it's basically they hide a lot of their actual um code so having access to the github is another way to know that these people are not scammers because if they publish all their code in a public on github that's a good sign also all right um the downfall with that why a lot of projects choose not to do that is because they don't want someone else to just come and fork off their project and create another project because then that's direct competition so it's it's half dozen of one you know ten dozen of another in that sense okay but anyway i hope this has been helpful for you guys you need to check out sliver there are some um um videos on youtube that shows you how you can use sliver and it shows you how you can actually check contracts to make sure that the contracts are tight and waterproof so that you can confidently invest in these now sliver is one i've i've, I've actually quoted you guys to use sliver because it's literally one of the easiest ones that you can use i have got access to other software that can actually check contracts at really deeper level but you really do need to know coding to be able to do that because it shows you not only how you can read a contract but it shows you exactly how someone can hack your contract right so this is really for high-end security stuff but um, you need to know a little bit of solidity or you need to be a coder to be able to use it. So this is pretty much easy. There's a lot of commands that makes it easy for you to actually use this. And this is called Sliver. And I will leave the link in the description for you guys to use this. All right. So it tells you how you can install it. And then you've just got a whole load of them. Um, it just goes through the whole thing. And then there, uh, there was somewhere here where it tells you 
how to use the actual commands. Um, where is it? Where, I think it might be in um, contract. Let me see. It might be, let me see if it's in Readme. I'm not sure if it's in Readme. Hello, Smart Contract Solidity Tooler. Install Wiseless Sliver. Um, I think it might be here, actually. Here we go, Sliver.print. Human Summary. Um, Sliver.print. Um, inherence. Graph. Blah, blah, blah. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, um, commands that you can put in here. That actually helps you out, right? So you got the test asserts. There's loads, 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 loads that can help you guys out, right? All right, so here we go. Ring. So this is basically it. Um, so it says token is sellable not a honeypot at this time buy fee is less than 10% sell fee is less than 10% verify contract source no prior similar token address contracts ownership renounce or source does not contain an owner contract the contract contains ownership functionality and ownership is not renounced which allows the creator or current owner to modify contract behavior. For example, disable selling change fees or mint new tokens, right? Um, token burn 95% owner wallet contains less than 5% of token supply. Um, creator wallet contains less than 5% of total supply. All other holders possess less than 5% of um, token supply. And that is right now, right? But when they first launched this, um, that's where majority of the scams happened, right? And the reality is, is that they just came back because apparently it was a hack, remember? Right? So they took major majority of the actual liquidity out and now they try to clean up and keep it as going for as long as their bare souls could take it anymore, thinking they, you know, look, we've got 300 million here. How long do we need to sit here and entertain these fools? And that's exactly what it is. But anyway, guys, look, I'm not going to make this too long. I am going to make, a, you know, a lot more videos kind of breaking stuff down, teaching you guys how you can actually use um, or how you can read the actual contracts. And you know what? I'm, I may even make a video showing you how you can use Sliver to check contracts for faults. All right. So, look, this is me. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe. I'm helping you to make sure that you don't get rugged again okay and that's what i'm about that's all i'm trying to do right now all right to show you there's so many people trying to make contracts to take money from your pocket so they can sit down on an island somewhere for the rest of their lives and probably their family's lives with our money and we're not going to allow that all right that if you're making a a, a, a a solid project yeah you're actually doing something that's actually adding value to people's lives and they invest in your business then fair dues but if all you're doing is creating a project that will last three months and then you rug pull your or you claim you got hacked or anything like that then you know what a lot of people's eyes are well open and before you even get into these projects i'm showing you what you need to look out for so you don't get suckered in anyway i've been your boy catch you next one peace peace i'm out <laughs>
So proxy contract keeps the storage and contract A, but allows you to code and execute instructions through contract B. Okay, that's the first thing. But it keeps the storage. Now, what is storage? Storage actually keeps the actual wallet addresses. At, well, it keeps the amount of of token in each wallet address. So it keeps the actual, um, you know, everybody that's actually invested in Ring. It kept all their um, balances. Is the word that I was looking for. Balances in each individual account or each individual wallet address right so it knows exactly it's the database it's the it keeps the the financial records we could call it right of each thing um so storage tracks everyone's balances that's what the storage does yeah proxy means you can change the contract which equals the so Proxy means you can change the contract, which equals da da da. They can bring an actual rug pull. So, proxy means you can change the contract while the contract is actually deployed because it acts as a second contract. So, they can go in and actually change, you know, how they want to pay out. Um, if they want a rug pull, like, hello, that's what they use is a proxy. Now, proxies doesn't necessarily mean if a contract has a proxy doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing but what it means is is that someone can change the way in which the original contract the contract a which is which is deployed how it actually works even after being deployed yeah that's the dangerous thing because if this is in the wrong people's hands, then you've got a problem. It's just like pausing a contract. You know, you might want to pause a contract for various different things. Maybe there's a mistake. And a lot of this should have happened during the test net stage. You know, they should have tested various different, you know, situations. And then they can pause it and say, okay, now we need to kind of change this and then maybe deploy another contract. The reality is if anyone's going to do any type of, proxy right and i'm moving from pools to proxy now if you're going to do any type of proxy number one it needs the best way to do this would be to create a completely fresh contract and as long as the people who's invested in you can see that you're you know you're not a scammer there's no dodgy things going on they will follow you into the second contract but what the problem is is people are not creating proxies with trust because they are obviously just not willing to be transparent. They're not willing to be docs. They're not willing to be in front of a camera. They're not willing to have a multi-sig wallet, which is an answer to a lot of things, right? This is the problem. And when you do not have multi-sig especially, and when you do not have people who are doxed, right? With the likes of Rug Docker or different platforms, then people get rug. So I'm telling you that the way in which Ring, right, was able to do what they done they had two things in place they had a proxy contract which they can then um, communicate with the contract a that's actually on um, b or c scan for the for this particular um, example right the proxy contract they basically you know no one checked it including me yeah, and moving forward, that ain't going to be the case, right? And number two, they were able to pause it, not because, you know, they felt threatened by a hack, but because they were able to just stop and slow down payouts, claim that they need to fix a bug here or claim they need to fix this hack that happened, which we'll 99% sure, yeah, that, yeah, they kind of had their own system. That's me. I'm 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 com convinced that they could hack their own system, right? So that is it. There are two things that you can do to change a contract, and that is proxy, and you can pause the contract. All right. Now the the pausing is not so much an issue, but the the actual um proxy is definitely very very dangerous. All right. So guys, be very aware. When a project first launch, when a project first launches, make sure that they do not have a proxy. Now, how can you tell? 
this is how you can tell. And I'm going to go to a particular contract. And this is Ring's contracts, right? Now, at, at the moment, I don't have the actual address for the original contract, right? It's still there, but I will, sh you know, I will find it and I will show it to you in the second video, right? But this is their um, second contract, right? So, if you look just under Pragma Solidity, right, that's the actual Solidity version that they're actually using. Anything that has import, import, import. Now, normally it will be like import this, import that, import that, import that, import that, import that, right? That simply means that what they've done is they're importing the proxy's details into the actual contract. That is warning signs now they don't have that here what they're trying to do is they're trying to clean their trail so that nothing seems dubious or, or suspicious and there's a lot of things that's suspicious with this contract don't get me wrong but when you don't see the import 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 stuff then that is one of the tell telltale signs that they're importing instructions from a separate contracts and you normally import it just under the pragma solidity now you can get import um functions underneath um the actual pragma they can actually put it all the way through the contracts but if you see a number of imports right then this is where you need to be looking at. You need to be looking at every single import because then you it will give you an address to say, right, we're all importing functions from this address into this contract. That is a telltale sign that they have a proxy contract in place, all right? So that is, so we're just going to look through it and just see because we, we never know, maybe they wanted to import stuff and i'm literally doing this on the fly like i always do all my videos so we're going to look for it together now functions is something you always always got to look at as well because we need to see what a function is but function can be misleading because people can create functions create a name for function that actually serves as a particular purpose but they change the name so that somebody like myself who's a coder will look for it and they're looking for particular functions but they can't see it because they've changed the name. But then if you read for it and you spend time reading for it, and trust me, guys, you know, a lot of this stuff does take time, all right? And it comes with a little bit of um, actual expertise and practice and stuff like that, okay? So we're looking through functions and we're looking through import um, tags. So if we just look through all the functions, we can see, right, okay, function two, um, UNIT256 safe, blah, 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 returns win256. Well, that's relatively um, standard. Right, boom. Uh, function, what else have we got here? Function. Um, internal pure returns, that's not it. Function, div, um, internal pay pure returns. No, that's not it. I'm looking for um, functions, 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 and we're looking also for import okay so if we can find any imports that's been going on um right so library dev returns true if account is a contract import it is safe to assume that an address for which this function returns false is an externally owned account okay um what we got here Important because control is transferred to re recipient, care must be taken to not create reentrancy vulnerabilities. Considering using reentry reentrancy guard or the solidity read the docs. Blah 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 blah. Right. Okay. Um. That's pretty much just comments, 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 comments. Here we go, a bit of code here. Function, function, call with value, um, internal returns, function with value, function, 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 function. There's, I, I, I'm, uh, there's quite a lot here, guys. Um, and I'm literally going through every single function. But I can do, I can actually make this a little bit easier.